Hey, everyone. Welcome to the show. So Georgia early voting is once again breaking records. As you guys likely know, Democrat Raphael Warnock and Republican Herschel Walker are vying for the final seat in the U.S. Senate. Neither one of them received more than 50 percent of the vote in the midterm, so a runoff was necessary. The official election day is next Tuesday, December 6th, but a judge ruled that voters would be allowed to begin early voting last Saturday, and it turned out to be very popular. As compared to the first day of early voting in the 2018 midterm runoff in the same state, also in, ele- in Georgia, voting doubled this year from that midterm um, or from that runoff. And according to the Washington Examiner, which is a right-wing news outlet, Turnout among female voters, black voters, and voters under 24 was particularly strong. What's interesting is that they were saying that there's two groups that have the highest voter turnout on the first day of early voting in this runoff. The first one you would expect, it's voters between 50 to 70 years old. The second age group, though, was pretty surprising. It's 18 to 24-year-olds. That's one reason why having this early holiday weekend voting was so crucial because, you know, you've got a lot of younger voters, often college students who are home for the holiday, so it's easier for them to cast a ballot in person or maybe even hand in a mail-in ballot that they were sent, um, you know, just straight to the polling location. And voter enthusiasm continued throughout the weekend and through Monday. According to Georgia's Deputy Secretary of State, more than 300,000 voters cast their ballot just on Monday. That was November 28th, and it broke the previous single-day voting record of 233,000. So what does this all mean? Who has the advantage? Who the hell knows, right? (laughs) It's hard to say. I mean, Democrats already retain their majority in the Senate, so even if Walker wins and he ties the Senate 50-50, Vice President Kamala Harris is still, she acts as the tiebreaker, just like she did before the midterms. So that gives Democrats the one-vote majority. But, you know, if Warnock wins, they don't need to bring in the vice president. They have a clear majority, 51 to 49. That also means the Democrats won't have to essentially share in leadership in Senate committees. So, you know, with a clear majority, they'll get to set the agenda. They get to call the shots in those respective committees. So it just comes down to whose side is more motivated. Now, I would say, you know, given the fact that Donald Trump just threw his hat back into the ring to run again for president, and given his little anti-Semite white supremacist dinner party over the weekend— Democratic voters are probably pretty motivated right now. They probably want to send a clear message that we don't care to live in Nazi Germany. You've also literally got Republicans successfully suing to take away college tuition payments that Biden enacted, that Biden put forth. So, you know, there's that probably getting quite a few younger people interested and excited to vote against the Republicans. There's also the six-week abortion ban in Georgia that was just reinstated by that state Supreme Court. So that might motivate some women and some young people to get out there and try to stop the extremists from further taking over the country. And I would say any men who don't want to end up paying child support for the rest of their lives. So, yeah. Yeah, I'd say the Democrats have a little bit of an edge, but you never know. So we'll see how things go. I'll keep you guys posted. Thanks so much for watching and listening. Please like, share, subscribe. Please donate if possible. Appreciate all of you. Take care. I will talk with you soon.